Hi, this is Crystal Hardison from Southeastern Livingston Center. I'm the director, and you are listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Hi, it's Tricia Johnston, residential realtor with Ladder and Bloom with your real estate tip of the week. Today, I'm sharing some important safety information for sellers. When your home is listed for sale with a realtor, buyers will always be accompanied by their agent, but the reality is that you're still letting people into your home that you don't know. Most people are very trustworthy, but some may have malicious intent. These five things will help protect you and your property. First, remove or hide any valuables such as cash, jewelry, prescription medications, ammunition, and firearms. Second, don't leave out any private financial information such as bank statements or tax returns. Third, when you return home after a showing, check to make sure that all windows and doors have been locked. Fourth, if you have a security system, set up a separate realtor code. Don't give out your primary code. And last but not least, make sure that your realtor uses an electronic lockbox. This can make sure that only professional realtors or appraisers can access the key to get into your home. It can also be programmed to email your realtor every time someone accesses the key so you'll always know who's been inside. The combination lock boxes can easily be broken into. They're just not that safe or secure. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm Tricia Johnston with Ladder and Bloom, and I'll be back here next week with another real estate tip for you. Hi, this is Tiffany Secard with Home Key Mortgage, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Every business owner has a story. Let Jim Chapman tell yours. Real Crime Podcast has had a lot of moments. Whether it's winning the 2019 People's Choice Award for Best Storytelling or 2020's dominant performance on Podcast Magazine's Hot 50, where they won just about every month top 50 podcasts in the country. Pretty impressive. But if you thought real life real crime had peaked, you would be wrong. They've had some sold out shows, Facebook fans, slews of Facebook fans, uh, and podcast awards galore, all in 2021 as well. Already this year, we've seen them rise through the rankings to the current position of second in the world in true crime podcasting by most publications, as well as an announcement of a spinoff entitled Don't Call It a Cold Case, in which Woody will focus on cold case files and difficult-to-solve cases such as the Barbara Blunt case right here in Livingston Parish. Sorry. So most recently in 2021, we've seen local, national, and even international headlines of the arrest of David Anthony Burns for the murder of Courtney Coco. This case sat in cold case files of the Alexandria Police Department for 15 years prior to Woody's involvement. It was Woody's gathering of evidence and solving of the case in seven weeks' time that led to the eventual arrest of Burns just a few weeks ago, right? That's correct. So, by Woody's side through all of this has been his bride of 11 years, Cindy, who is the creative genius of real life, real crime. And in just a few short years, uh, in the her dominance in the realm of social media has turned real life, real crime into a media empire. Today we're going to talk about all of these things with both of these fine folks and a whole lot more. So with that, welcome Woody and Cindy Overton to Local Leaders Podcast. Thank, Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. I am excited today. Now, Woody, this is not your first appearance on Local Leaders of the Podcast. No, that's true. That's you true. appeared way back in episode yeah. one. Um yeah. And I'll tell you what, man, you really shot me through the roof. Ah, oh, you shoot us through the roof. No, no, no. no. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on. But, Cindy, we have a couple of firsts for you, right? Oh, yeah. 
first time uh, you've been on this show and mm-hmm. first time you've really been on any show when it comes to podcasting. Mm-hmm. And you're already rocking and rolling. Look, <laughs> <laughs> so so we're excited to kind of uh, uh, get you on and get you going with these podcasts. And who knows, you might have a spinoff coming on pretty soon, right? Uh, Real Housewives of Norwood. I love. See, <laughs> yeah. she's already coming up with ideas, <laughs> Woody. She's already coming up with ideas now. Uh, what do you lots happened since last time that you and I sat down and talked? When we sat down last time, COVID was in the early stages, oh, man, right? Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, live podcasts, meet and greets, all that stuff was non-existent. Right, couldn't do any of that. Uh, right. David Anthony Burns was still running free. Exactly right. <laughs> but my oh my, what a year yeah. makes as far as a difference. So. Uh, first, we're going to give listeners and viewers some perspective on you two's relationship. So we're going to, we're going to go with Cindy here. Uh, I messaged you a few days ago, and I said, hey, Cindy, how long have you and Woody been married? And, and she said, well, we were married sometime in December of 2009. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm I like, said, if you find the date, let me know. <laughs> yes, she did. I was like, date what? <laughs> so I am ready to hear that. I got to hear this story. Okay. Tell me, tell me, uh, tell me how you don't know the date. <laughs> well, it's not relevant. Like, I mean, it's our union form May 5th. Yes. And, and that was just it. But he, I said, you needed to tell the wedding story. Um, the, I was with the state police at the time and, one evening I just called her and we already had the license, but I called her. I said, get ready. We're going to get married. So <laughs> went to uh, Max Owens, justice of peace in, in Albany and which is where I got my hair cut and <laughs> you can get your license done and everything else. And that's the, awesome. uh, I knew Mr. Max, but the, the, I w- walked in and the young man sitting behind the desk, I had arrested before. Mm. So I walked in, his eyes went. <laughs> here said, it comes I said, again. I said, uh, can you call Mr. Max and tell him that I'm here? And he called and said, oh, Detective Overton's out here. And so he, I think I got a haircut. You got a haircut? I got a haircut. And then. You uh, watched Jeopardy? Watched Jeopardy while we were waiting on Max. And yeah. then, then uh, he married us and the. I, this is a true story. The guy that witnessed it was the guy that I arrested. Oh, that is <laughs> unbelievable. That is a great story. You can't make that up. No, you can't. You can't make it up. And it, so you had said y'all found each other kind of on Facebook or what he found you on Facebook? Well, we grew up together and okay. then it had been years and I honestly thought he was not even alive anymore. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'd come home to visit and go down Plank Road and look at his house and like, always the wonder what am I wonder what happened to Woody it was pre-internet pre-facebook yeah. like all of that and so I just thought he was dead I mean like there's no way the man that I grew up with would be alive <laughs> yeah, pretty hardcore other than, other than God I know that feeling Woody yeah. <laughs> and so um Facebook was coming you know like all of us were getting on Facebook so my best friend April said you know get you need to look Woody up. And so in the meantime, Woody had found me, sent a friend request, and and what did you say? She's been stalking me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> she was stalking me back then. That's not my version of the story. <laughs> yeah, Woody's sitting there going, do what? <laughs> Well, that's I like that story. Very, very interesting. So during y'all's marriage, you went through some challenges, especially related to Woody's health. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I do want to mention, if you have not picked up Woody Everton's book entitled Jesus Held Me, do yourself a favor and get the book. I actually downloaded the audio version. Yeah. And uh, I like to listen to it that way because I like to listen to Woody. Mm-hmm. And um, and so it's almost like listening to his uh, Real Life Real Crime podcast, mm-hmm. except for it's his book. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you do an amazing job of, of really uh, reading it. And, and when you read those books and it's from the person that wrote it and they're reading it, it's a lot better to me. Yeah. I love it when it's read by the author. So pick that up. Very, uh, very good book. So we're going to fast forward here a little bit. You know, you you write the book, and then boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, real life, real crime. The podcast is is uh, is jumping onto the scene. Cindy, tell me tell me how you came up with the concept for real life, real crime. Um, it was Christmas time. He calls it hunting season. <laughs> <laughs> 
most of the year. It's hunting season. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And uh, it's football season or hunting season. So um, <laughs> I love that. And so my daughter came home from college and she was listening to a podcast and it was just us in the house. So she was like, Mom, do you mind if we keep this on while we wrap presents? And I don't remember, honestly, which one it was. I'm not going to say the name if I did. Yeah. And I was like, this is boring, Sophie. And she's like, no, you got to listen to the story. The story's intriguing, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, Sophie, this is boring. Can we find something else? And she's like, no, this is the only one I listen to. And so we just continued to wrap presents. I listened to the story. I tried to listen to another one, you know, like later that night, and I couldn't. Yeah. And then the next day, Woody calls me, and he says, it's going to be really bad weather. Let's go to the coast, go to Biloxi for the weekend or a few days. And so on the way there, as per usual, we're driving down the road on 22, going from like Marpaul to Springfield. Yeah. And he's telling me a story. And I said, right when we got to Springfield, I'll never forget it. I said, you need to start a podcast. And we're at the light in Springfield. He turns right and he's like, what's a podcast? By the time we got to the interstate to get on, is that 12? I think it was 12. 55. 55. 55. So by, by the time we got there, we had already looked up a podcast, listened, and he's already decided we're doing a podcast. This is boring. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, you said tell a story. I said, no, I'll tell him a story. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. You didn't know what you were getting into then, right. did you? Well, no, I did. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't like we started that day. We had to do, you know, we did a lot of research. And, oh, and, no, but uh, what I mean is we that. had already decided that we were going to right. do the yeah. research. Yeah. We were going to do all of the uh, the stuff. So you were 100 percent on board, kind of with this idea. Well, I, we always roll with it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Some of our best ideas come up just off yeah. the cuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing with podcast and and I, you and I, you more, much more than me, but we can both kind of relate to um, it taking kind of a, a life of its own. Uh, yeah, right. And and that's the crazy thing about podcasting is it um, it goes really fast. It's mm-hmm. like uh, you don't really have a uh, slowdown time with podcasts. You can't, right. uh, you can't no. or you lose it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Exactly right. So um, we're going to go I ahead. D- I do want to say something. Yes. No, I'm not correcting. Um, he always says that I said that people like his voice. I yeah. had no idea that people liked his voice. Yeah. My, my words were that I like your voice and you, you can just say anything to me under the sun and you just get it. I do it. Like yeah. it was really more <laughs> of, I knew that his whole voice would be powerful. And so I very powerful that's quickly what became known as the voice. Yeah. 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 You know, it's interesting. I, I listened to it first and, um, this is way back in the beginning when you were doing it. And I, called my wife. I said, you gotta, you gotta listen to this podcast. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so she listened to it, uh, I guess while she was at work or after work. And she told me that night, Mm -hmm. she said, he has a great Mm -hmm. voice. And then I'm like, wait a minute, what about my voice? (laughs) (laughs) No comparison. Yeah. What's up with that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, some people just kind of have a, a, almost that, I don't know, grow gravel or deep deep kind of voice but uh kudos to your voice there woody very good sir (laughs) (laughs) i do want to mention that the uh the good folks at restoration one of east baton rouge while they have been your source for damage whether it's fire water smoke or mold they now do crime scene cleanup woody wow wow. that's that's big business that's That's a a huge business uh car accident cleanup etc so if you need any of these services reach out to restoration one in baton rouge 225-351-7753 when damage is done call restoration one so y'all are both kind of riding the wave right you do it you start doing your podcast and and uh and it takes off, and it seems like it took off really fast. People really caught on. They were enjoying the content. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot more than just sitting down and, and talking through a microphone, right? There's a lot behind the scenes, right, Miss mm-hmm. Cindy, that that you have to do uh, as far as promotion is concerned. And y'all have a lot of help um, with your with your kind of your back. Uh, for not, dream team. Yeah, dream team. That's what I was trying to think of. Mm-hmm. Your dream team, yeah. it really, really helps y'all out. and. And, uh, and all those sorts of things, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot to keep up with. And, and, uh, it seems like y'all love it. 
you know, oh, both yeah. of you just mm. nonstop. Yeah. So, um, so you're rocking and rolling. Now your first episode was an episode called double clutch. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. That was a, a unbelievably good episode. Um, and, uh, Cindy, what were your thoughts? I mean, it was a, it was a good episode, but it was kind of tough to hear, right? It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was real. Yeah. It was real life. It was real life, real crime. And, and what were your thoughts on that? Well, I know probably 90% of the stories that he tells, it's very rare that I hadn't heard a, even a glimpse of one. And he decided to go with that one just basically for the all factor. You know, I mean, let's get their attention and they're mm. either going to like it or they're not. I mean, I, I could be uh, wrong. Well, I, I said, if they want to hear a story. I'll tell them well, a story. That, right? that, yeah. Yeah. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have started out with that one because you, you can see, you know, people who click on and never, you know, click on again. But, yeah. uh, I mean, it's real life, real crime. I mean, I, I, I just didn't, want uh yeah after listening to all these other shows i'm like this is boring i'm so i'm gonna tell them something real I mean, it gets you right but if that story doesn't get you nothing well period the, the sad thing is though well not the sad but you know when one thing that i want to point out is that woody does not sensationalize anything you know he left out major major horror horrific the events that happened in that case at, yeah at the same time you have to tell at least the base facts, right? right. To, yes. to do the story Absolutely. justice. Yeah. I agree. But there's so much that people don't really, you know, know that, you know, it was left out, but it would just have been overkill, you know, to yeah. quote another episode. It would be overkill by that point, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, it, but it was a great episode. And I, and I thought it was, I, I told Woody the, uh, you know, the first time he sat down with me, uh, it seems like y'all made all the right moves at all the right times. Um, uh, even down to naming your your lifers, mm -hmm. lifers. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's a great idea. That was him. Yeah, um, you know your dream team, all those sorts of things. That was just, him. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it really mm -hmm. is, and mm -hmm. and uh, so what a great job there. Um, From humble beginnings in 1989. Big Mike's has long been a place for friends and family to gather for lunch, dinner, and drinks. Big Mike, Jocelyn, and their friendly staff invite you to come in and relax in one of their spacious dining areas or watch a game on one of the big screen TVs. Big Mike's is a place to meet old friends or make new ones. Big Mike's offers daily and nightly specials, and they specialize in serving up delicious and fresh menu items. Big Mike's offers a catering menu for large groups and has private party rooms for up to 100 guests. Whether you're planning a quick lunch or a large family dinner or just a night out with friends, Big Mike welcomes you to experience a great time. And don't forget to grab some t-shirts, caps, or koozies in the gift shop. Oh, or a bottle of Big Mike's Honey Dijon. It's delicious. Big Mike's Sports Bar and Grill. We're kind of a big deal. Cindy, you know, we kind of talked about the popularity that comes with podcasting and when you take off and when people like what you have to say. Um, the media side really takes the most time, right, for both of y'all. It, mm -hmm. it, it uh, you know, paying attention to when people are commenting and, and you're very interactive with your with your audience. All day, every day. Yeah, it's yeah. it's amazing. It's and it's hard. It's it's not uh not physically hard, but it's right. it's right. just hard to find time to do all that. And uh, you're very good at that. I think that's a big key to what you're what you're doing is mm -hmm. that you're very yeah. You, you can tell you appreciate it, right? I, yeah. I, I really appreciate all of them. And that's something that I noticed when I started listening. Is I'm like, yeah, wow. I can he tell really you daily routine. Wake up. Before I get out of bed and having a coffee, I'm on social media and then for at least a couple of hours and then in the middle of the day and then about five or six and even starting back again until like midnight sometimes or even later. The, uh, but it's, it's, you know, you have a job you love, you never have to go to work. And, right. And, and uh, it's That's pretty, right. pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. And the proof is in the numbers, right? I'm not on like the fan pages, 34,000 and yes. you know, 20,000, this one, et cetera. 
Huge numbers, huge accolades. I mean, uh, you know, there's some good podcasts out there yeah. um, in different jo- every different genre, and uh, and it just seems like you know one thing for one thing, you're the people that enjoy your podcast. They're very loyal, and they're yeah, and they're true. look they're they're uh, in that article the uh, that was written a few mm-hmm. days ago the the cult right yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. cult like following yeah. but uh, they'll cut somebody if, uh, yeah, <laughs> if they, they say anything negative about real life that's, that's, that's the truth right yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. so that's that's always great and that speaks to speaks to the content you're putting out that's that's really awesome now Woody. Big headlines uh, recently for the arrest of David Anthony Burns for the murder of Courtney Coco. Just a couple of questions about that. How did you hear about the arrest? I, um, I actually knew ahead of time about about what date the grand jury was going to be on. I knew that the grand jury, of course, the grand jury is secret, mm-hmm. but I knew um, it was going to be on or about the 13th. So I loaded up. And went to Alexander and was waiting. Now, let me tell you, um, I, you know, I followed this case kind of through you all mm-hmm. this time. And to tell you how important uh, what Woody's doing is, I wasn't even familiar with this case before Real Life Real Crime. Yeah, nobody was yeah. pretty much, right? It was yeah. frozen. Frozen and, and, and old. And the older those cases get, the, you know, the harder they are to solve, right? Less than 1% ever get solved. And the older the longer the, it goes cold, that percentage goes down dramatically. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So you get that call finally that, hey, we're going to arrest this guy. Um, what was that feeling like? Is uh, I teared up. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Yeah. You should have. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's huge, man. That family. This, they're my family. Yeah, and and, and uh, I got the God bumps right now. The, yeah, the, uh, it was just a you know God does everything in His time, and it took another year and a half, but it is what it is. He's in jail where where he deserves to be. Yeah, and when I sit and and I'm I'm sure Cindy, you're the same way. You know, you kind of sit and you look at that. Number one is it's absolutely amazing what you what you did. Um, I think. You know, you were a detective before internet, before oh, all yeah, of the. Right. I mean, you were before cell phones. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a little bit harder to solve cases probably back right, then than right. these days. Not that it's easy these days, right, but right. Um, you didn't have all the information right at your fingertips like you do now. Right. Um, so I think you know. I'm sure those skills helped you. Uh, you yeah. know, as well. Uh, and Courtney's family, uh, I call them the A team. Yeah, uh, her mom and her grandmother and her two aunts. Uh, they had a like two thousand page case file when I got with Miss Stephanie the first time that they had collected over the years. So my hats off to them yeah. because they they're a heck of a, a group of detectives who never gave up. Yeah. So, but I was able to work off of that. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing the the pressure that were was placed on you know the people that kind of decide these things right. and and uh and i think that was a lot of why we see him there you are in my opinion the primary reason um when you were going through that case was there a point in time where you were like well this is who did it how did they miss this yeah the, uh absolutely and it came through a lifer one, one of the fans mm-hmm. and um you know we ran down so many tips and 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 i talked to so many people and going to Texas and talking to Detective Rabelais and everything else. But there was a point when a lifer reached out to me and said, I, I can tell you who did this. And and my, well, I don't want to give it away who it is. My, someone had told her, said that they've told me all the years and it kept saying over and over that Anthony did it, yeah. that Burns did it. And I said, I think you can get me a recording of that. Yeah. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> and in that recording, this nice. person said that Burns did it, um, I think, like nine times in three minutes when, when she yeah. questioned him about it. Yeah. And then, wow. Uh, that, and look, wasn't on the radar. And, yeah. And, and, you know, Burns actually was a pallbearer at Courtney's funeral. No. Straight up. There you go. That's some drop That's information cold, right? for you. Right. That's really yeah. cold. That's disgusting, man. But um, 
Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah. So, you know, he gets arrested, and and uh, you went down for the – was it the arraignment? That's correct. The, uh, I was there the week of the arrest and went back the following Thursday, and the arraignment was on Friday. I sat on the front row with the family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, so, some bitch look you in the I, I, I wanted to knock his teeth out. No, he didn't have <laughs> – I told one of the guys was with, with the family, I said, um, you know, the he's going to do – play it one of two ways. He's going to come in and try to stare everybody down or he's going to have his head on the floor and he had his head on the floor, meaning he wouldn't come look on. at anybody until the end when he did that, that crazy thing. Yeah, you yeah. You see the psychopath come out of him and, and you know, judging everything. The indictment's been read. Judge, uh, this court appointed attorney says, you know, not guilty. And they, they give the uh, next date, right? And then yeah. he stops and – he reaches up with his cuffs hand, starts to take his mask off, says, Yana, yesterday my physical body was murdered. And they just <laughs> get him out. They ran Here we him go. out. Yeah. 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 And I was like, that's the psychopath, right? He the uh, he had this plan that he was gonna he's gonna be the focus of attention. He he still thought he was the smartest person in the room, right? Which it, hey, if you get away from murder for sixteen and a half years and you have everybody fooled, the family included, I, you know, it that's is what it is. Yeah. What were you thinking? When you found out this guy was uh, finally getting arrested. Stephanie Berthelot and the crew at SR Enterprise can handle it all. From sheetrock to texture to paint. Give Stephanie a call at 504-432-9284. SR Enterprise, where they spread the paint. And you spread the word. I mean, probably gonna pay for what he did at some point soon. Relief, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's been a lot on. I can't imagine Miss Stephanie and the family for so long. So it was relief for them. It was relief for Woody. Mm. Um, relief for Courtney. And I mean, when am I? Am I? Deep, like my saddest moments or my happiest moments, I get on my face and pray. And yeah. I literally just fell to the floor and started praying and cried. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was just. Yeah. Was Proud like, of this guy, too. Huh? Oh, my God. I mean, extreme. Yeah. But I live my life proud of him. I mean, if they, if it would have never, if Anthony would have never been arrested, I still would have been proud of him. You yeah. Know? It, for me, at that moment, it was more about him feeling his own pride and vindication and, you know, all of that. that Seeing all that hard work. Right, yeah. For him. But for me, I live knowing that he did it, you know. But yeah. for him, no, just for, for me, the cop part. It was about him. getting justice right. for the family. Absolutely. Right. It's, it, it, it's not, not one ounce of pride no. in what I did. Yeah. But the fact that, you know, I had the bumps again, the fact that, uh, you know, being able to close out was just amazing. Yeah. Well, and, then, and I, I have to say that every interview he's done since has been because I've made him do it. Yeah. And I don't make Woody over to do anything. I've never ever said you have to do something. Yeah. Until this, but he doesn't want to be and taking credit. I mean, he he just wants. The man behind bars. Absolutely. That's all he wants. But I'm proud of you. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it. And, and uh, I think you did amazing work. Uh, you know, I did a, a podcast before this one where I kind of, I just felt like I, I wanted to get some shit out, right? Yeah, I appreciate and so, that, yeah. Uh, I did a podcast where, uh, where I freestyled, which is weird for me, mm-hmm. um, but I did it. And... Uh, and said what I needed to say. Yeah, and I thought it was very important. Yeah, and it, it, I, thank you for that. And you could tell it came from the heart. It, it, it yeah, was a freestyling part. So yeah. So um, Cindy, do all do all natural skincare products sound like something you'd be interested in? Of course. Well, I got good news for you. Let me tell you about Kim Kimberly B's All Natural. Mm-hmm. They have chemical-free skincare products right here in Livingston Parish. So it's we- whether it's lip balm, sugar scrubs, any itch cream, or a vast array of other products you need, it's likely that they have it. For more information, check out KimberlyBeesAllNatural.com. Okay. Now let's get into our next topic, which is your new series launching entitled Don't Call It a Cold Case. 
You got a great intro for that one, yeah, too. Yeah, Toby, Toby Tom Toby, play original. Toby Tom play is an is a <laughs> intro master, right? <laughs> he, he really is, and yeah. and uh, he's got a great one there. Tell us about this series. You know? Well, it, ever since I started on Courtney's case, and, um, you know, even I, I was doing it live, right, and, and I, I couldn't get so much into working Courtney's case as because I couldn't get off the bad police work and stuff that was done. That's what where, where the story was going. I mean, it was just bad. And uh, but anyway, the I think people, uh, of course, they you know they know, know the success now, but they knew the success back then also. Being able to take it off um, from the cold case, Rapids Parish Sheriff's Office cold case list to the number one active case in three weeks, yeah. and then. Uh, giving it over to them in seven weeks but i get jim i i'm telling you at least two or three requests a day from around the world of people wanting me to look at their cold cases and wow. um and toby and i were talking about it and it, miss barbara blunt who you know her murder anniversary i hate to call it that but that is this week may the second um i think it's been 13 years but the you know we started when uh sheriff ard asked us asked me to uh look at miss barbara's case and we started working it right and then and that was a little bit different uh toby was my producer then and he was coming in the field with me on the interviews and stuff like that to try to improve the sound etc yeah but the there are so many great people out there that are hurting and their families and all and i'm like man you just there's no way financially mentally, physically, geographically, that I could work all these cases. But so uh, Toby's a, a creative genius himself. Yeah, absolutely. And he's like, man, we need, we need to do a podcast where we pick out these cases and, and work them. Even if you can't close them out, you can work it and at least give some national attention to the thing. And that's where, that's where it was born from. Awesome. And, yeah, it's, you know, the Barbara Blunt case is uh, – I've looked a little bit into that case. Of course, it's right here in Livingston Parish. Yes. Um, Miss Barbara Blunt just totally disappeared. Uh, I think one of the issues with that case right off the bat was the weather was horrible. Everything uh, it, totally different than Courtney Coco's case where everything was screwed up. Uh, uh, law enforcement did everything perfect, uh, the sheriff's office in this case, but it was, it was just like everything was against them from a monsoon uh, to wash evidence away to just everything was bad yeah and, uh against law enforcement you know and it's just a, a perfect um uh, destruction of, of everything i mean i don't know how, how else to explain yeah that. yeah and uh so I look forward to that one. Yeah. Uh, if anybody but, can do it, you I'm going to tell you this, and hats off to uh, Sheriff Jason Art again, because he, I mean, then when we were working it before COVID, the, um, I mean, he, he hit me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. He's like, hey, he had he had the, his own copy of the case file. Mm -hmm. and, and he's looking at it, and he's like, hey, this. I'm like, yeah, this. And, man, he had a, a brand-new, fresh set of detectives, assigned to the case and they were meeting on uh, you know twice a week on it and, and and we were really making some progress and then covid came and you can't couldn't do anything and right. then the the allocation stuff that he was allocating not that they've ever stopped working because they haven't but sure. stuff he was allocating then then they got to deal with covid in the jail and all these yeah you got things. resources and, 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 for and, 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 and we can't get subpoenas issued to corporations and stuff because nobody's in their office you know, it's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's almost like it's still been a perfect storm to try to hinder us and stop us from working this case, but we're not going to stop. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think it's coming on, uh, on solving that one too. Yeah. I, you know, how to, when you look at these, I would have, you know, your brain probably works differently than a lot of people's. It's a, I, I picture you, and I'm probably got this way off, but I picture you kind of laying all this stuff out and just looking over it. And or is it more instinct? The, no, I, yeah, I read through it, and and look, the again, these guys did a wonderful job, but it's easy to be an armchair quarterback and come in after the fact, and 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 not. I can't say it's easy. It's I can't 
not taking anything away from them at all whatsoever. But you know, you're coming in 12 years later and I'm looking at stuff and I'm like, Ooh, what about this? What about this? What about this move? But when you're in a real time investigation, like they were, you know, a lot of things will come in and uh, you may look at it for a second, but you're still focused on something else right now yeah. until you can get off of that. You know sure. what I mean? So yeah, the, totally uh, get it. Um, so I, I mean, it's very interesting. But Jason was our sheriff Ard was yeah. really interested in the crowdsourcing that was used in Courtney Coco. And yeah. so Woody knowing the department and Woody, you know, knowing him. Yeah mixed with the crowdsourcing that was helpful with Courtney Coco, I think was a major pull but for Woody coming in. The reason he was interested is uh, lifers kept hitting me up all through the Courtney Coco's case. What about Miss Barber's case? What about Miss Barber's case? Yes. And I say, hey, ask your share. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm I'm busy, right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, but I remember when she went missing. I was like six months gone from the sheriff's office at the state police at the time. I remember thinking, man, I'm, I'm glad that wasn't my case. Right. And yeah. I, uh, I mean, selfishly on my part. Sure. But in, and Jason, give it to him. You gotta give him, he's, he's a forward thinker and, and he's all about, he didn't, he's like me on, on this one. It, 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 he doesn't care. He just yeah. wants to solve it. Right. Yeah. So he's an amazing guy in his yeah, own right. Right. I mean, uh, well, we came up together. I mean, we yeah. really did. So, yeah. Uh, interesting thing about jason he started out 16 years old as a cadet with the denham right. springs police that's department right. that's right and so uh lifelong lifelong police officer as well um so cindy that's another series that you got you found five minutes in the day somewhere to start promoting don't <laughs> that's all him and toby that's all him and toby. they can have that one up i hear you so let's discuss patreon patron or patreon however you say it we got to figure out how you say that at know. some point i hey. Patrons are part of the Patreon platform. Well, there you go. Yeah. Patreon. Let's discuss that and how it works. I've had a few people ask me, you know, what is Woody's Patreon? Yeah. And what is that about? So you've got some different levels of membership there, whichever one of y'all just kind of shed some light on, on how that works and the memberships and all that. <laughs> Um, well, basically for each tier level, like, so, okay, Patreon is like a subscription service, yep. almost like a Netflix or something like that, except mm -hmm. you get to pick whatever, um, perks you want, so to speak. So each tier level has various perks and they build up, a, you know, according to price point basically sure so like at the five dollar level you basically get a shout out on social media that's and then the five dollars a month will support the the show yeah and then for ten dollars the vandalism tier Love that it. i know well the first one is disturbing the peace so that's yeah. why you get a shout out and then um vandalism you get a sticker after three months and you get that's when you start to get like unedited commercial free early release episodes sure that's the most popular and then you go well and so it goes up from there all the okay. way up to peeping tom which is 40 dollars, which we created in hopes that covid would be gone and it is and that's yes pretty much for live shows and the vip it, yeah and stuff so like it's that. for that Okay, and the only time you should be proud to be a peeping Tom. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, and naturally, each one of them has a crime name. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. This is, look, man, it's it's. Gen I'm telling you, it's genius. What, like, what, everything. what it is, and and I had someone hit me up in the very beginning. Uh, um, I said, oh, "I love you, podcast," and I'm I'm like weeks old after the first, or maybe I had two episodes out, and they were like, "Are you going to uh, do Patreon?" And I'm like, I'm like. Yeah, sure we are. Absolutely. I didn't know what it was, right? <laughs> I had no idea. Heck when, yeah, we're on that tomorrow. <laughs> but they, it, it's a way our lifers support us. And I'm going to tell you something, real life, real crime would not exist today had it not been to the level, especially that we are, had it not been for our Patreon support. It's all about the support, right? I mean, I cut in during, like, we're yeah, talking, and absolutely. I'll cut in and do some things. And some it's, sometimes I hate doing that because I feel like it takes away. Yeah, and and, and, and I, did, I did too, Jim, on some, like, our commercials. I mm. hate we have national commercials, no doubt about it. And then, and, and, but, you know, people that get to listen to the podcast for free they have to hear the commercials so yes. the patrons they don't yeah. and then and sometimes you get a bad review about having commercials well you know what 
you, you listen to a free show, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's not free for us. I can right. promise you, right? No, no doubt yeah. about it. So. Yeah. So um, doing great there. And, you know, there's a slew. It seems like every day some sort of social media is coming out that uh, we didn't have yesterday. I remember uh, TikTok. So I fought the TikTok thing forever. <laughs> I was not getting on TikTok. And, uh, yeah. and the other day, what did I do? I downloaded TikTok. I know. Seems like it's another outlet to get the message out, right? Yeah. Um, Discord. So you're on, what? What is Discord? Yeah, it's crazy. It's another lifer thing that uh, they a suggestion. You know, you need to get it on Discord, uh, and so we did it for open open container patrons and above. And man, I'm having some real fun with it. Yeah. When I have proper internet service, and if, especially if I'm out of town having a beer, I'll jump on Discord, and the um, the members are on there up to 24 you can have a live video feed so i get to put the the um faces with the names and and then like this morning at 6 30 i jumped on discord and said hey y'all everybody have a great day you, you you know you can text yeah unlimited um voice chat up to 250 people and then video up to 24 and so we really just started that yeah and and like we have the dream team for the crew page we have these ladies and i did not come up with this name <laughs> they, they call themselves the cows that, and then, <laughs> okay. that's what i say i'm not touching that one and yeah then, uh but it stands for council of woody Cal 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 and but they kind of run the discord the and, and one guy <laughs> nathan wayne pontier out of um marksville and he's a he's a mechanical guy behind it but they kind of run that but it's that's another big thing man it's just yeah. uh but you know what we don't get on there and tell stories we get on there and, and just like bs about the day yeah and and and, and talk to, uh, talk, talk to the kids <laughs> and, we, 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 <laughs> talk about what they're talking about your mom and, and where <laughs> and, you know it's crazy man it's just it, you know what it is it's getting to put the human face on me and the human face on them and they love it and i love it and and i wish i could get on it every day yeah i think it's a great it's a great thing and you said it exactly yeah. right it it humanizes everybody right, because right. uh uh, w with your podcast, you're telling a story and, right. and people aren't really getting to know you right. outside of that. Right. And so discord, I would imagine would be a good way to do that. Yeah. Uh Casey, have you called the plumber about the sink in the break room? Yep. They came this morning. I can't believe you missed them. What was their name again? Giotts plumbing. Wow, that was quick, and they did a great job. They did. And when you need plumbing services of any type, give Giotts Plumbing a call. With over 50 years combined plumbing experience, the team at Giotts Plumbing can handle all of your plumbing needs. So whether it's residential, commercial, new construction, or reconstruction, give Giotts Plumbing a call at 907-6282 and get scheduled fast. Giotts Plumbing. A proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Uh, speaking of Patreon, so uh, I got a great story here. So okay. first, I'll, I'll start with this. You know, I used to uh, have a guy come in the paint store all the time. And I'm, a, I'm an outside sales rep for a paint company in my day job. Right. And they had a guy come in. He was a bail bondsman. His name was Wayne Henson. He owned a, a – uh, it was a bail bonding company called A Second Chance. And he would come in there every morning because he painted also. And he would tell stories. And um, he was good, really good at telling stories. And we used to call it story time with Wayne. When yeah. Wayne would pull up, yeah. everybody stopped. Yeah. Wayne came in, and he had some kind of story about some guy he was chasing down right. that skipped bail and all those sorts of things. And and uh, so I guess that's kind of where my uh, my passion for like true crime storytelling came from. And I always kind of admired that. So you know, I'm I brainstorm constantly, and this is my favorite podcast that I listen to personally. I appreciate that. Um, and I'm always like, man, Woody's you know he's got such an awesome life with all these stories. I mean, and I'm thinking he could do something on prison stories and do something on when you were when you were a police officer for Southeastern. Right, right. I mean, that's a whole new thing right. she's thinking right now. Shh, don't mm -hmm. give him no ideas. <laughs> so all of these things going on, right? 
right, that you have, just this amazing life, and you could probably never tell all your stories, yeah. you know, yeah. if you had 100 years. So I wanted to come up with, I'm like, when he gets on the show, this is like two weeks ago, right. I'm like, I'm going to have the best idea for him, and he's going to think, Jim Chapman is a genius. All right. So I'm like. I think you're a genius. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm like, man, here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna talk to Woody about doing stories on lie detection. That would be mm-hmm. perfect because he had this private, mm-hmm. basically lie detection business, and uh, I bet he's got some great stories. So, uh, <laughs> le- uh, I guess it was a couple of days ago you posted yeah. Stink on yeah. on uh, Patreon, yeah. and I put it on, and I'm like. God, dog. <laughs> he beat me to his own yeah. thing. Of course. He, a, there are a million of those stories. Yeah. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed that episode. Yeah. Do you know, I, I didn't even know I was going to do it, and I, I knew I needed to do a, a patron vault episode, and that's what I call them, you know, uh, vandalism and above, you know, have X amount of stories locked up. Yes. And, and I'll pull from it every once in a while if we're out of town or something happens. But the, I you know, I was thinking about it, I was kicking – Three thirty in the morning, and, and yes, you know, want to do my best work, and, yeah. And, it, and it, I went up in my studio, and I said, I just let it go. And I, yeah, I still haven't listened to it yet. And I went, my, my best episodes are the ones that I don't remember what I said. I know the overall context, but I know I went off kind of in the end because I was pissed. But the, yeah, uh, but there's a million crazy polygraph stories. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I can imagine. Crazy people. Don't call it a polygraph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, just don't call the wife. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, don't yeah. call the wife either. No. Well, I'll tell you what I really enjoyed about that episode that stood out to me is you, uh, you know, there was one part of it where you're talking about a gentleman you're describing his muscles and everything. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, Woody, I'm telling you, I was picturing the guy. Yeah. The, the way you are so descriptive in yeah. your storytelling, it's like you're sitting back, you're listening, and you know, the, you're know you seeing the character yeah, that you're absolutely. describing. Absolutely. Man, awesome job. I awesome job. It. And I really enjoyed uh, hearing hearing those lie detector stories from, yeah. from one fan to yeah. you. Cool. I appreciate it. Uh, before we go to the next segment, I need to mention that mortgage interest rates are still extremely low. Maybe you're currently renting or maybe you are looking to refinance. Regardless of the scenario, the folks at Hunky Mortgage want to help. So contact Hunky Mortgage located right here in Denham Springs at 225-590-5473. Hunky Mortgage, they are the key that opens the door to your dreams. Love that tagline. There you go. So Woody, you have an event coming up. Yes, indeed. An event, Woody. I know, finally, right? Finally. (laughs) Miss Cindy, an event. Mm -hmm. Yes, finally, finally. So it is the Crew Bash 2. So let's talk about where it's at, what's going down, accommodations, all that. Texas Club. Yep, old, yep. Old famous Texas my Club. My old stomping ground. Yeah, it was really my stomping ground. Oh, oh, I was there. Look, Wednesdays <laughs> and Saturdays. I was going to say, Wednesday night after, uh, I guess you I could say You had to be careful this, when you went in. The, uh, the, it was ladies' night. They got <laughs> yes. to drink for free till nine with the Chippendale dancers. Yes, the dancers. male strippers. And then Don't they, go in then there. And then nine o'clock, it was like, <laughs> no, nah, I would say shooting fish in a barrel. I wouldn't do that. But, uh, anyway, it was <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll never forget. I went in one time, and it was like 15 minutes before these dudes got off stage. Right. And um, and they wouldn't even let dudes in before Mm-mm. that. Mm-mm. But for whatever reason, they said – you know, you can go in, but go up to the top there. And, and I was a single guy back then. And look, sure. I knew that was the time to go to, <laughs> you know, meet ladies. And uh, so so I went and we went upstairs or whatever. They had this goofball up there. And I'm like, man, I cannot believe I'm sitting in here right now. I should have waited in the car. <laughs> Every funny. Wednesday night, though. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. No doubt about it. I used to hang out there a lot, yes, too, Yes, indeed. But, you know, it, it's, it's made... Jim, what's different than uh, the basin last year, and I, I know you and your wife were the, the, there for that, yeah. is um, the basin, you know, it's, it's not set up like Texas Club is. No. Texas Club was built for concerts. Yeah. And, and, and um, you know, it's just, it's a prime, prime, prime spot. And the sound and the light show, everything is going to be so so different than it was yes. last year. Yes. And uh, the crowd size also and everything. But the, um, it's you know, the level of professional, we're always trying to do better. And, and, uh, some people last year couldn't hear. And then, 
you know, stuff like that. But that's not, as you know, it's that's a not a venue. problem in, in yeah. Texas no. club, right? Made for it. And, and uh, I mean, you know, everybody, all the greats have played there. And from David, Garth Brooks. David Allen Coe to Garth Brooks yeah. to George Strait. And, and yeah. I mean, so uh, we're really excited yeah. to get to do it with Chase Tyler. Yeah, yeah. And and thank goodness, uh, Cindy, that we're back to times where you can plan things yes, like this. Right? And, really excited. Yes, indeed. And uh, it's interesting. I think everybody's kind of ready to go back to normal. I went. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. to the Denham Springs. They had the Spring Fest. I heard uh, about that this yeah, weekend. It was packed. Week. Yeah. There must have been a million people yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I thought a podcast was going on with Woody over yeah. there. I mean, <laughs> people they had there. It was insane. People was, are hungry, man. You see yeah. the airport when the crew bash happens. We've got people coming in from Philadelphia, from Nebraska, Nebraska. Colorado, Tennessee, all yeah. over. Yeah. Just, yeah. just for the show, right? Yeah. And, and you have a deal set up, I believe, with uh, the Hilton – Riverside yeah, Hilton, yeah. Uh, the uh, Capital Center, Capital Hilton. Center, and, Hilton. and, and yeah. that's where I always stay when I'm downtown because yeah, Third that, Street's right there. It's yeah. a great, best hotel downtown, and so yeah, we have a, a, a real life, real crime discount if you coming in from out of town, you want to stay there, or you know, if you want to stay there because you know you're not going to be able to go home. Yeah. And, uh, uh, <laughs> It's just there's gonna be a lot of people, but you just use if you book it online with the Hilton, uh, the code at checkout is RRC, or if you book direct with the hotel, just tell them you come to see the podcast, real the show, real life, real crime, great crew bash, great, and uh, you've secured a great discount. Over yeah, there. man, I said yeah. it's a really significant discount for them. So. Yeah, yeah, good deal. So we at Local Leaders of Podcast happen to have secured some tickets to this yeah, event to give away deal. to a lucky listener, yeah, right? Yeah. Your lifers. Your right, lifers. Right, a lot of them right. filled out a little uh, little form that we had. And so I'm going to ask Miss Cindy. I'm going to turn behind me here. And, and I've got a bucket here with a bunch of slips in it. Just pull one out. And then we'll – sorry, I know I'm shoving no, this I'm in just... y'all's. Let's see who we got here. Oh, it's Jim Chapman. No. <laughs> How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. It is Heather Cotrer. Cool. Cool. Of she's Zachary. A, yeah, she's an excellent lifer. Yeah. There you Congratulations, go. Congratulations, so, Heather. Congratulations. Nice to see you there. Yes, yes, yes. Heather, Heather Cotrer. Yeah, oh. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, Jim, we appreciate the, the, the backing, Always right? Support. Nothing nothing to it. I, I love promoting, uh, promoting my favorite podcast. There's that's no doubt awesome. about it. Yeah. Uh, so, Heather Contreras, you win two tickets to the Crew Bash, courtesy of Local Leaders of the Podcast. Now, Jim, we're swamped with these podcasts, and I'm in the mood for some local barbecue for lunch. Barbecue? Casey, the problem with barbecue is the speed. That would take forever. Not at Buddy's Barbecue. With the drive through line, they can get us fed fast, and that sauce, mmm, yum. It is right in the heart of Denham Springs. Do they have specials? Yes, they have plate lunch specials every day, Jim. And I bet you didn't know they offer some of the best catfish plates you've ever tasted on Fridays. And on Saturdays, they have smoked ribeyes. They are as flavorful as you can find anywhere. Okay, I'm hungry. What's the number? I'll call it in. No, just go online and place your order. By the time you're finished, I can head that way. That is convenient. And really smart. Yep, just like me. A local business. And you know what I always say. Oh, yes. Jim Chapman loves local. Correct. And that makes me smart. Oh, please. If you're in the mood for barbecue, go see Buddy's Barbecue at 105 Florida Avenue Southeast, right in the heart of Denham Springs. They're a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Now, let's let's cover LOPA. Mm-hmm. A little bit because right. uh, on this show, um, you, you know, you got uh, some great things going on with Lopo where you've teamed up with uh, 
uh, fishing captain, charter. Captain of all of uh, Duvall's Cajun charters out of Delacroix. Yeah. He's a lifer, and, and uh, he took my boys and I fishing, and, man, it was amazing. Now, I had saltwater camp uh, until – after Rita and I gave it up, I, you know, cause I got tired of them washing away. So, but, um, to get to go down to Delacroix mm-hmm. and on the war, one of the worst days of the year. And we tore them up mm-hmm. and, and, um, in like four or five different species of fish. And he was 30 year law enforcement veteran, but he's from down there and he, oh, wow. uh, 20 years with J JPSO and then, uh, 10 years with Homeland security, but he's been doing this full time for seven years. And the hit, yeah, everybody knows I support LOPA. Yes. The Louisiana Organization Agency. And when he found out, he, I found out from him that his mother was a recipient, a double lung transplant recipient, and he kept her alive for five more years. So he's like, dude, he said, he said, I want to donate a trip. He said, um, we'll raffle it off. And for the winner gets to bring a guest and he said part of it has to be you'll come down and fish with him right it's your fans i yeah. said hey then that's awesome we'll do it and then real yeah. life real crime we'll we'll get the lodging for them yeah right? come down and i'll hang out with them the night before we'll fish all day and uh it'd be a blast fantastic all proceeds going to lopa fan all proceeds going to lopa and you can get tickets online yeah, yeah well we we're we're working that out because i didn't know facebook has all these rules about raffles or whatever so i think we'll uh we'll we'll start posting the number and they can call and get the tickets and we'll ship it to them however we're going to do it yeah we're we're working that out we'll have that out this week though so all you need is a nice chest to bring your fish on that's uh, yeah he cleans them for you and everything right it's amazing and he can give you hey he you better believe he knows how to cook them all yeah uh uh, the balls cajun charters out of delacroix y'all if you ever want an awesome experience, all top of the line, first rate. And call Captain Calvin Duvall or look him up at Duvall's Cajun Charters dot com or on Facebook. Lopa is an amazing charity. Lopa, uh, uh, hey man, I, 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 this you know people are, are alive, but because of Lopa, yeah. I mean that's the you know, yeah, I can uh, we support our, uh, St. Jude personally mm-hmm. for, for the kids, yeah, right? Us too. And and that's one thing helping kids and the families getting through therapy. But these people are dying every day waiting on some type of organ transplant. Yes, right? and you know just to bring awareness to it. I love it, and uh, and they're good people, Jim. The, yeah, uh, you uh, the. You need to do a podcast with them one day. Yes, I would I, love I, to. I went and did one with with them at they have a podcast studio in um Covington, Mandeville, Slidell area, Covington. whatever it was. It was really nice. Oh, I'd love and so I did a, a podcast with them and but uh Lori Steele is kind of their spokesperson. Uh, yeah. and she also works with the sheriff's office, right? The, the uh, gifted life. The it? gifted life podcast, yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I'll do. And we have not talked about this beforehand. So if you want me to cut it out, I will after. Right. But what I would like to do is local leaders of podcast. I would like to uh, give something to that charity uh, as well, yes. nonprofit. So um, they need an ice chest. So I was looking the other day, and I said, wow. "Well, I'd like to give them a 125 quart uh, Yeti." What? Ice chest. That's six hundred dollar value. What? So, um, Jeez, so I'd nice. like to get uh, well, involved then, in that. Then uh, we need maybe we'll sell a few tickets, more tickets. Tickets reprinted, and that's it. <laughs> it's worth the thirty dollars yeah, to print, and, 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 or just staple it. And then, uh, <laughs> wow. That's amazing, and, Thank and you it so shows much. Uh, what kind of what kind of person you need character. So, I the, and it, 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 what we'll do help. is. You get on the stage with us then mm-hmm. when we do the drawing at the at the crew bash. Awesome deal. Awesome, all right, all right. I love it. That's amazing. Now, fun facts on Woody Overton. This is uh, <laughs> these are good. So I shot him a few little questions yesterday. Uh, I asked him what he wanted to be when he was a kid. You never guess a police officer. Who Pol- would have met? police officer or military? I was I, I was I a both. weatherman. That's yeah. what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was about man. that. I think so. I mean, I call I call a man. storm or two. I don't got to be right. Hopefully, half the time. I was gonna say hopefully you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the best purchase purchase you ever made <laughs> a, di- a divorce lawyer. That's right. <laughs> You know why divorces are, you know why they're so expensive? Because, yeah. because they're worth it. Yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. 
favorite beer, and I have a funny story here. One of my best friends is James Adam McCants at Sporting Center, and um, he was actually in here when you responded back. And I said, "What do you think Woody's favorite beer is?" He said, "Shinerbach." I said, "You you asked him that before." He said, "Nope, nope, didn't yeah, know nothing yeah, about it." Yeah. I said, "Well, then how the heck did you know? Because it is Shinerbach." Right. And, and he said, uh, "He just looked like a guy who would like Shinerbach." Yeah, I, I the, the for over. <laughs> Probably thirty years. I, I remember when you couldn't get Shinerbach in the state of Louisiana. Yeah, and, and now it's readily available everywhere. So. Yes, yes. Well, I, Woody and uh, Cindy also, y'all are a team, and y'all really rock and roll it with yeah. real life, real crime. I, I love it. I mean, I'm gonna tell you this, and she doesn't know I'm gonna say it, but I mean, there is no real life, real crime without her because all I do is tell the story. She's the one that runs the whole ship, and yeah. and and she we were able to retire from teaching last year and she is the ceo official title uh, on the paperwork and everything for real life or crime i love it i so. love it and you deserve it too sydney Thank you. you're doing a even, great job even when she wants to kill me even when is, you want look that's just normal yeah. i mean that's <laughs> hey, like, if, it, if they ever say i committed suicide call a homicide detective and look at the wife first <laughs> indeed <laughs> indeed i really appreciate y'all and uh before i go i have some parting gifts for y'all from some sponsors of mine that really? wanted me to give those to Amazing. you. And they are That's great. Awesome. The first one is from our friends at Sporting Center. Yeah, so great. Hey, the like hat I'm fish. wearing is from Sporting Center. Yes, yes. You like to fish, and he's, Absolutely. he brought this by. Yeah. This is just a little cutting board. I love so cutting boards. Tell them thank you. I'm going to show, you, show the camera that. that. I, 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 when I cook, I cook well. I, I, the cutting boards are my, yes, one do. of my favorites. So. Thank you so much. Now, look, this he's next gift. Yeah, he is. He's he's a he's an awesome, awesome individual. Doesn't he look like, um? what's that um, Pawn Star show. Yeah. <laughs> I told him that. He said, I've never heard that before. I said, you don't get out much because you look just like. Great guy. Great products. Rick, and, Rick. Uh, uh, Absolutely. So the next thing I have is a gift from Hancock Whitney Bank. Um, I'm going to support a sponsor. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to get a sponsorship for you from Hank. Hey, yeah. How about that? I saw the show. So I have a very good friend. Her name is Lori Johnson. Yeah, I, saw, I commonly I saw refer show. to her as my best friend that's a chick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she loves when I say that. Yeah, yeah. But um, the, pe- the good folks in Hancock Whitney um, gave you, wanted me to give you. Ooh. What? Look at her. Pretty sharp. Hey, and a, and uh, I'm going to see if I can kind of. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. You got but, it? Uh, it's amazing. Sorry, right, we're live, folks, sort of. Okay. All right, All right so there it is. And it? I'll hold that if you can slide it. Is it slide up or down? Down. There you go. Super, Look, super So it's deep three right. wines. One of them is that decoy. Is awesome, which right? I, I saw that. The decoy and then mm-hmm. the Cabernet Sauvignon. This ain't going to last. Sonoma Coast, La Crema. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Boy, Thank that's you very, awesome. very, very much. So Hancock uh, Whitney. Yes. Awesome, right? Hancock Whitney uh, gave you that. That's that's amazing. There we Thank go. You. So uh, thank you to the good folks at Hancock Whitney and Lori Johnson right there at the uh, at the Florida Avenue branch right here in Denham Springs for all of that. Hey, boy, they, uh, they'll be seeing us soon. Yes. <laughs> Cindy, shout out the website and uh, Facebook for anybody that wants to, for the one or two people that might not know who y'all are. Hey, here at Local Leaders, the podcast, as well as my home, we use Jamie Fontenot and expert pest services for everything from general pest services to termite protection. Those termites are swarming right now, so if you'd like to get a great deal on termite protection, call the experts at Expert Pest Services at 225-315-0097. All right, realliferalcrime.com is the website, and uh, Clint and I actually have a new website waiting in the background. That's awesome. So it's Clint a, with Black Sheep Creative. Yes. Yes, and, we do need to shout him out. Um, and then all of our Facebook pages is Real Life Real Crime, Friends, Fans, and Crew. Friends and Fans Crew. Private group. That's the very private group of 34. 34 and change. some change right some now. Change. Um, real Life Real Crime Land Yap Group. That's where yeah. you go to post all of your, like, 
marketing yourself like we created it to share recipes we created it to like hobbies. if you have your own like hobby little anything you want to share but any small businesses that you have if you want to promote your small business or you know you make cookies or you're and, part of and that's a, a private group also yeah. so we don't let spammers or anything in but right. it, it, it's a way um for our lifers to get to express themselves outside of true crime, which is only allowed on the crew Anything page. Anything on Perfect. not true crime. They can post whatever they want. And then we have the Patreon-only group. That's for mm. people that are vandalism tier and above. And that, like, Woody just posted some crap. If you hadn't checked it out, you need to check it out. Yeah. I've got a, a lot of Courtney's case on there, a lot of uh, insight on the Monsters series, the uh, oh, well, well, a, a lot of different stuff that – I, you know, you have to sign that you won't share anything. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a lot of stuff that just yeah, shouldn't be out there. Yeah. Yeah. And there then you if you want to be friends with Woody, you can't because he has breached his friend uh. limit, but you can go to <laughs> Woody Overton real life, real crime, and then you can follow him and be his friend. And go. then, um, Instagram is o at Overton Woody and yeah. at real life, real crime. Yep. Yeah. Twitter is at Real Life Crime, and TikTok is Real Life Real Crime. There you go. TikTok, our friends at TikTok. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, well, of Discord, you know, if you're a patron, I think that's all social media. Yeah, the Instagram is is something I do. Um, I, I've learned as a you know I focus my attention on that. So it's a lot of posts about stuff that. Are, aren't necessarily uh true true yeah. crime and then we've done a couple i've done a couple of tiktoks after a few beers <laughs> that's uh, the best uh, time for tiktok but we're, you know, we're still learning it's just so much man you yeah know, but, uh, but man i'm not complaining yeah yeah we'll look for that um i sincerely want to thank the lady behind the camera today miss tiffany Secar, my tiffany. assistant yeah. um i called her on short notice and asked her if she could help me out today and she was so sweet to do so thank you very much miss tiffany i want to thank everyone out there for viewing and listening to local leaders the podcast please like comment subscribe and share us on all your social media we strive to shine a spotlight on all of our local businesses in the livingston parish area Thanks to all our sponsors. We could not do any of this without all of you. Fact. Absolutely. We could not. Um, we, we understand that. Yeah. Right, man. Yeah. So important. That's right. And thank you uh, for having us. Oh, yeah. look, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, Y'all have always, anytime I've asked. We're you, just getting started. Yeah. And I know it's been a lot of delays after delays, et cetera, but, you know, God's time. Yeah. So. That's right. Always but is. You, you did it. When you, as soon as we confirmed and you started posting on social media, yeah. he's like, oh, we that's, can't get out of here now. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, I'm meaning, talking about like the, um, you've, you've invited me to some events and dinners and yeah. like that. And, and certain, it, it almost is like being a homicide detective and yeah. it's a holiday or whatever, you know, your number's getting called. Right? Oh, yeah. It seems like, it seems like yeah. someone's trying to block us. I guess so we have her here today. That's right. Uh, so. That's right. And I, I, Look, you're an expert already. I mean, uh, uh, you did great. I look forward to Housewives of Livingston Parish or whatever you want to. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. So until next time, I'm Jim Chapman reminding you, love your community, support local business, support real life, real crime, Appreciate and it. local leaders of the podcast, and keep leading. Thank you. Thank you. William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. Now is the time, more than ever, to support local business. Alisa Verrett Interiors and Custom Workroom is working hard to use Made in the USA products for all their clients' window coverings. Schedule your appointment today for a consultation on Roman shades, drapes, shutters, outdoor sunshades, and even woven woods. Need a virtual appointment? No problem. Call Elisa at area code 225-955-1135.
Alisa Barrett Interiors and Custom Workroom, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast.